Yeah, this one was so much better. Welcome back to CompTV, a place you can go for all things tech. I'm Lee, and in this video we're going to take a look at yet another free OS for gaming. In the first episode we installed and tested SteamOS, and though the process wasn't pretty we were able to get some games up and running. Check the link out above if you haven't seen it already, but essentially we determined that SteamOS made our test games pretty much unplayable. Thankfully there are a few more operating systems to go, and as the intro suggested, this one is no slacker. Again we'll take a look at the installation process for the OS, and then compare the benchmarks of Rocket League, City Skylines, and Shadow of Mordor to see how each game performs on the OS. So let's dig in. Launched in October 2004, the Ubuntu operating system was released into the wild. It was completely free to begin with, and like SteamOS is a distribution of the Linux operating system. Unlike SteamOS however, Ubuntu is much more flexible hardware-wise, reminiscent of CSGO, and that it can run on a toaster, provided that you had the right firmware. To be more specific, it requires only a 2GHz or better dual-core processor, 2GB of RAM, 25GB of hard drive space, an installation media, preferably a USB as usual, and optionally some internet access. Notice that you could probably get away with any GPU, though I'm utilizing the GTX 460 along with an FX 6300 and 8GB of RAM. Also in contrast to SteamOS, the Ubuntu installation was a breeze. The only additional step here is to download Rufus, which is a lightweight program for quickly burning ISOs onto a USB. Once you've installed that, make sure you're selecting the right USB to put the ISO on, and then go down to the ISO picker and navigate to your Ubuntu ISO. Then click start. After that is complete, simply plug your USB into your PC and boot from it, and once you're on the Ubuntu splash screen, select install. That's seriously it. It will ask you a few more questions like your time zone and the name of the admin account, but this is literally the simplest installer for an OS I've ever had to use. Then you can download Steam directly from the Steam website like on any other OS and add your games like normal. So let's say you've installed Ubuntu and your games are added in and ready to play. You'll definitely be able to play as normal, right? Well. Not exactly. As some commenters pointed out in the last video, part of the reason our SteamOS performance was so bad was because we were using its default display drivers. I didn't install the Nvidia drivers in that video however, because the whole point was to find a quick and easy OS to game on for free, and out of the box you would have to do some tricky magic to access where you would install the drivers on SteamOS. Honestly I was already so fed up with the OS to begin with, I knew I couldn't recommend that OS let alone the driver install process. And in about the same line of thought, Ubuntu 2 only when utilizing the generic display drivers would perform identically, outputting nauseating frame rates and making you contemplate whether or not it was worth your time. However, Ubuntu makes this process incredibly easy by providing a simple user interface for installing the GPU's drivers. I'm not sure how this would work for an AMD user, but I can't imagine it's all that different. Go to the application search on the top left of your launch bar and search for additional drivers. Click it to open it and you should see the various Nvidia drivers available. I selected the newest one and also made sure that the drivers were tested and once that was done installing, the rest was history. Rocket League literally performed 2000% better, getting a consistent frame rate average of about 240 FPS, up from 14 on SteamOS. Again, we are testing in 720p on medium settings, but putting the game back up to 1080p max settings still yielded an average FPS around 70. This is much more of what I expected given the game and how it's performed on comparable systems. City Skylines was another welcomed result, scoring an average of 65 FPS, up from 30 from the SteamOS benchmark. Bumping that up to 1080p at medium still gave an average of 30, but overall the experience still made a lot more sense. Finally, Shadow of Mordor, which is a somewhat graphic heavy game, only went up to an average of 44 FPS on 720p medium, but the extra 14 or so FPS may make a huge difference to most people depending on their preferences. I would not by any means grab a GTX 460 for a game like Mordor, but again, the graphics drivers increased the performance by almost half of the original score. So, conclusion time as always, and to be completely honest, if I had to rate my experience, it would be 9 out of 10 GTX 460s. The increase in gaming performance was incredible given the new drivers. Plus, the overall out-of-the-box usability and performance really puts Ubuntu at the top of my OS list, regardless of the fact that it's 100% free. I'm looking forward to exploring Ubuntu further, testing other features such as overclocking without Afterburner's help, and also getting an Xbox controller to work, both of which would be a huge benefit to gamers, and given my experience so far, these tasks are probably nothing too hard to accomplish. 
That's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, and also if you enjoy PC hardware, gaming builds, and various tech content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know in the comments below what OS you use and why, and keep your eyes peeled for the videos coming soon, including the finale of this free OS series. Oh, and in case you didn't know, I'm Lee from ComTV. Finally, Shadow of Mordor, which is a somewhat heavy graphic. Finally, Shadow of Mordor, which is a somewhat heavy graphic. Finally, Shadow of Mordor, which is a somewhat heavy graphic game. Oh, I said it again.